Hi everyone, this lesson is on weird or atypical signs and symptoms of diverticulitis. Before we get into those signs and symptoms, let's give a brief introduction as to what diverticulitis is. So diverticulitis is a gastrointestinal disorder involving inflammation of diverticula. So this is why we call it diverticulitis. So diverticulitis is an inflammation of diverticula. And diverticula, more specifically, are outpouchings of the colon or large intestine. So if we're to look at this diagram here, here is the large intestine, and this is where these diverticular or outpouchings occur. And if we were to actually zoom up on a section of the large intestine that has these diverticula, we can see these little bulges. So diverticula are going to be these outpouches or bulges in the large intestine, and they are due to weakened bowel walls. Now briefly, some of the risk factors for getting diverticulitis include increasing age, long-term low fiber intake, obesity, smoking, and lack of exercise. And some of the classic Signs and symptoms of diverticulitis include abdominal pain and changes of bowel habits, and more specifically, often patients will have diarrhea. But as we will see, there are many other signs and symptoms and more weird or atypical signs and symptoms, which we're going to talk about in the next upcoming slides. So the first possible weird or strange finding in diverticulitis is abdominal pain appearing as another condition. So we will quickly study this diagram because it's going to help us explain why the abdominal pain in diverticulitis can appear as another condition. So if we were to look at this image here, here's the stomach. The stomach leads into the small intestine, which wraps around and leads into the large intestine. And the large intestine has the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, and then into the rectum. So as we can see, the large intestine will wrap around in this location. We also have the appendix, which is this projection off of the large intestine. And then other parts of the abdominal anatomy that are going to be important here include the liver and the biliary tree, including the gallbladder. And then we also have the pancreas here that crosses the upper abdomen. Diverticulitis is going to be an inflammation of diverticula, which occur on the large intestine. So this area here can all be affected in diverticulitis. So this overview of abdominal anatomy is going to help us understand why abdominal pain and diverticulitis can look like some other condition. So the best way to look at abdominal pain is by breaking the abdomen down into four quadrants using the umbilicus or the belly button as the center point. So we put a horizontal line and a vertical line through the belly button and we then get what we would call the right upper quadrant. So this is the patient's right side and this is the upper quadrant. So this is the right upper quadrant. Here is the left upper quadrant, the right lower quadrant, and the left lower quadrant. And then this area here is going to be termed as the epigastric area or the epigastrium. So pain in the left lower quadrant is actually going to be the most commonly affected location in diverticulitis. And this is because there can be a lot of diverticula in and around the sigmoid colon. So this can be a reason why we can see abdominal pain in this location in diverticulitis. But having said that, there have been cases where a pain in this area, in the left lower quadrant, can be mistaken for irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bowel syndrome can have pain in all of these quadrants, but can also have pain in the left lower quadrant, and it may be mistaken for irritable bowel syndrome in some cases, especially when there is diarrhea involved as well. Now, in some cases, the pain can be in the right lower quadrant. This is going to be more an atypical finding. And if it is in the right lower quadrant, it can be mistaken for appendicitis, an inflammation of the appendix. Remember from that earlier diagram we looked at, the appendix is in the right lower quadrant. So in some cases, this may be mistaken for appendicitis if the pain is in the right lower quadrant. And for whatever reason, we see right lower quadrant pain in diverticulitis more commonly in Asian populations. And what can help distinguish between appendicitis and this right lower quadrant pain in diverticulitis is that there's often a pattern of pain in appendicitis where the pain will often start around the embolicus and then slowly move and become more focalized to the right lower quadrant. So that is often a way to distinguish between appendicitis and right lower quadrant pain in diverticulitis. Now, pain can also occur in the right upper quadrant. As we showed in that last diagram, the large intestine can wrap around with the ascending colon, the transverse colon, and the descending colon going through all of these quadrants. So a right upper quadrant pain can occur in diverticulitis, although this is going to be more rare 
And it is possible that this may be misdiagnosed or that this pain may appear like cholecystitis. Cholecystitis is a condition where the gallbladder is inflamed. So remember that the liver and the biliary tree and the gallbladder are in the right upper quadrant. We can also see pain occurring in the epigastric area in rare cases as well. And this epigastric pain can be mistaken for other conditions, including pancreatitis or an inflammation of the pancreas. So again, the pancreas crosses the upper abdomen. And it can also be mistaken for peptic ulcer disease. So peptic ulcer disease can affect the stomach or the duodenum, the first part of the small intestine, and this can lead to epigastric pain as well. So these are some possible mistaken conditions of very rare atypical abdominal pain from diverticulitis. The next set of atypical signs and symptoms in diverticulitis are those that appear like a urinary tract infection. So urinary tract signs and symptoms can occur in some patients with diverticulitis. So here is where the bladder is located. So the bladder is in front of these gastrointestinal structures. And you can imagine that if there is a very large diverticula, particularly in the sigmoid colon in this area, and it's very large and it becomes inflamed and swollen, it may actually push up against the bladder. It may actually compress the bladder. And this can cause urinary tract signs and symptoms. Some of these can include urinary frequency. So you can imagine that if there is this inflamed diverticula that is pushing against the bladder, this can cause a patient to feel like they need to pee or urinate more frequently. So this can lead to increased frequency of urination. Another sign or symptom that can occur is urinary urgency. Again, because of that compression of the bladder, patients will feel the need to urgently urinate as well. And then in some cases, patients may have dysuria, and dysuria is a burning sensation when urinating. So because of these particular signs and symptoms, some cases may be mistaken for a urinary tract infection, but because of those other signs and symptoms of diverticulitis, including abdominal pain and changes in bowel habit, this is often not going to be the case. It's often going to be recognized that this is part of diverticulitis, although in some cases it may not. So this is something important to make note of as well. Another unusual finding of diverticulitis is bloating and flatulence. So we mentioned that abdominal pain and bowel habit changes are common symptoms of diverticulitis, but bloating and flatulence can also be findings in diverticulitis. This clinical finding is not something that is thought about in diverticulitis. It's often thought about as a symptom of another gastrointestinal condition like irritable bowel syndrome or IBS. But again, often there are going to be other signs and symptoms that indicate diverticulitis, including abdominal pain, especially in the left lower quadrant, and changes in bowel habit, along with some of the risk factors we talked about earlier on in this lesson. Now, another atypical finding that is not thought about in diverticulitis is nausea and vomiting and the potential for a bowel obstruction. So, Nausea and vomiting can occur in severe cases of diverticulitis, and more specifically, it's going to be from severe abdominal pain. Again, most of the time that abdominal pain is going to be in the left lower quadrant, and if the abdominal pain is severe, this can cause the patient to feel nauseous and potentially vomit as well. In rare cases, diverticulitis may lead to a large bowel obstruction. So it's a large bowel obstruction because it is the large intestine, and the reason that diverticulitis can lead to a large bowel obstruction is because there may be a diverticula that is so large and it becomes so inflamed and swollen that it actually blocks the lumen or the hollow tube of the large intestine. So this is going to lead to a bowel obstruction. And a large bowel obstruction can also lead to nausea and vomiting, but can also lead to other symptoms as well, including constipation and obstipation. Constipation is going to be a reduction in bowel movement frequency, and obstipation is where the patient is not even going to pass gas. They won't even have flatus. And abdominal distension can occur in these cases as well. You can imagine that if the large intestine is blocked, gas that would normally pass through the large intestine becomes blocked and builds up proximally, and we get this large abdominal distension as we see in this image here. So these are some other possible findings in diverticulitis that are not thought about as well. And then we can also see leg pain in diverticulitis. Now you may be wondering, how is this possible? How can we see leg pain in diverticulitis? Leg pain can actually occur in very rare cases of diverticulitis where the patients develop a thigh abscess. So a thigh abscess may occur in rare cases of large intestinal perforation. So this is going to be where there is a retroperitoneal perforation from diverticulitis. Those diverticula can become so enlarged, they can actually 
have a perforation, a hole can develop in the diverticula, and then fecal material can exit through that hole in the diverticula and then enter into the thigh or the upper leg, and especially when there is a retroperitoneal perforation. So behind the peritoneum, there can be some leak or a hole or perforation in that large intestine that can cause fecal material and an eventual development of an abscess in that area. So the upper leg can be affected. And some other signs and symptoms that can go along with that thigh abscess not only include that thigh or leg pain, but also leg emphysema. So leg emphysema is when there is air in the leg. So this can occur because of bacterial activity. And then because it's an abscess, we are going to see fever and chills. The patient's going to be very unwell and very unstable because of it. If you want an in-depth overview of diverticulitis, please check out my full lesson on diverticulitis. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.